waiting. You finally get that title shot. But the funny thing was, Ernie, you had mixed emotions. Of course, you wanted to beat Muhammad Ali, but a certain part of you didn't want to beat Muhammad Ali. Ali, one of the nicest men I ever met. You know, and he was so nice to me. He allowed me to use training camp free of charge, gave me advice on certain fighters I would fight and how to beat them and how to train for him, prepare for him. And he wanted to come in now while I'm trained to kind of give me support for this fight. So Ali always been a good friend of mine. Like I said, I wanted to win. I didn't want to win. But it's security for the family. Yeah. You know, it was more than him being a good friend, him being good to you. He was actually your idol. Yes, he was. Uh -huh. Ali uh, did so much for the fight game. Did so much and uh, helped so many people. When you fought him, uh, they call you Mr. at the bank after the fight. So he helped a lot of young fighters like myself get established in the fight game and make a little money to take care of families, too. You really think, Ernie, I mean, you don't want to beat a guy you worship. But like you said, you were doing it for your family, yeah. and you had something to prove. This was yeah. a decade in the waiting. I mean, can you really say that you didn't want to win that fight? Well, I had mixed emotion. I did. But I wanted to win. I didn't want to win because Ali was, like, in my idol. But I thought, best I win. But, you know, I, I, I had Ali hurt in the second round. If I had fought my old style, I would have knocked him out. I backed off and let him off. Let him off the Brazil. In fact, talk about that. Yeah. You were in a situation, you had him in trouble in the second round. You caught him with a big shot. Yeah. He was wobbling. Yes. If you had fought your old style, remember, they were coaching you not to punch yourself out. Yeah. Why didn't you finish him while you had the chance? Well, you know, Ali is so cunning. I don't know if he's faking or what. You know, so I didn't want to move in for the kill and get killed. So I just paid the caution and go in and let him off. Actually, what he was doing, he was kind of feigning with you and the crowd a little bit. He pretended like his knees buckled and he was pretending to be hurt. He kind of got inside your mind a little bit, didn't he? Yeah, he did, because I like to say, very crafty. I, I didn't want to make some big mistakes, so I let him off, you know, back off a little. But, you know, um, if I had to do over again, um, I think I would have fought my old fights. I would have I finished him off then, because when I get a guy in trouble, I don't usually let him off. I throw a lot of punches to take him out. I mean, how tough is that? Because your instincts were always keep coming forward, keep whacking. One more good shot, and maybe he's on the canvas and that belt's yeah. around your waist. How tough was it to deal with knowing that you let him off the hook? Well, what it meant to be, what it meant to be. Um, I took out on Mr. George Foreman, so what it meant to be at the time. And George Foreman had an interesting statement recently about Muhammad Ali. I know you've seen Muhammad recently. He's yeah. supporting you for your upcoming fight. Yeah. He said Muhammad is still the greatest show on earth. Yes. Muhammad's not in very good health right now. When you see Muhammad now, what do you think? Well, it's kind of a shame to see a great fighter like him in the shape he's in now. Uh, been such a great athlete over the years. Um, but I love the guy dearly. He's been good to me my whole career, and we're friends now. And I just love the guy, and it's a shame that it just happened to him along the way. How important is your corner during a fight? Very, very important. Uh, for that fight, uh, my corner uh, didn't have the experience it should have had in the corner for the title fight, and it hurt me, uh, you know, dramatically because I had experience in the corner. You know, the, the historic thing about that fight, it's the only fight they've ever done this, on NBC television, they were doing the scores, yeah. the official scores after every round. Yeah. Why didn't somebody from your corner go find out how you were doing? Well, they didn't know. See, they experienced it. They were concerned more concerned about me than what. So they, they, no experience, see, it made a big difference. Yeah, because uh, the story was they thought that you were doing all right in the later rounds. You needed a big finish, yeah. but you didn't know that because they didn't know the score. Right. Uh -huh. Fast one watching the score, maybe it was told me I came on a little stronger at the end there. You think that if you knew that you needed a knockout, you could have got that knockout? I, I probably could have, uh, cause I have, in the 14 rounds, I heard all these again, the 14 round, I had him hurt again. I probably would have finished him off. I think I could have finished him off. All right, now that was the title shot against Muhammad Ali. You got a second chance yeah. against Larry Holmes. When we come back, we'll talk about that. Okay. Ernie Shavers fought all the great fighters of his era. He's back in the ring. He's fighting again in June. We'll take a time out. When we come back, more with Ernie Shavers. Sports match is getting ready for a comeback fight. Ernie, we were talking before the break about the fight with Muhammad Ali in 1977. Second round, you had him wobbled. It ended up going a full 15 rounds. Did you get anything in defeat? Was there a moral victory in going 15 rounds with Muhammad Ali? Oh, yes. First time I went 15 rounds, uh, you know, they had it out. I couldn't go 10 or couldn't go 12 or what. I went 15. It, it helped me quite tremendously, mentally, if anything else. So then you moved ahead. You took a shot at Larry Holmes in 1978. Yeah. We've seen Larry Holmes. He's still fighting. He's a very crafty guy, yeah. kind of a clever fighter. But Larry Holmes in his prime, heavyweight champion of the world. How effective was he? Very. Larry had one of the best jabs I ever fought against. I think he was very stiff, very fast, and good combination puncher. Larry could punch, you know, pretty good with the right hand, too. Very good fight. Unestimated, but a lot of people underestimated him, but a very good fighter. Now, you said already in the interview tonight that when you got in front of a guy and you whacked him, you did not expect him to get back up. No. You uh, caught Larry with a great shot. Uh, he got back up, though. Uh-oh. When I hit Larry, he went down. 
<laughs> I see his eyebrows. You hit him right on the chin. That's amazing. I mean, that's amazing. He gets up from that. Only Larry and Ali could took the punch and we just came back. No one else would have took it. No one. Did you think in 1978, when you caught him with that shot on the chin, that fight was over right then? How surprised were you? 79. 79, I yeah. should say. How surprised were you when he got back up? Very surprised. Uh-oh, long night. <laughs> uh, he wasn't smiling either, so, I mean, I thought he was out. When he came back, I knew it would be a tough night. Did he get his due respect as the heavyweight champion of the world? No, he didn't. No, Larry won the best fight around. Him and Ali probably the best two fights around during our era. But he never gave him respect. He was so close, far so close behind Ali. You look at him, what about Ken Norton? How does Ken Norton fit in, in this mix? Well, Ken was a good fighter, a very good fighter. He did well, but he just didn't like punches like myself. Otherwise, he, he did quite well. Ken was a good fighter, tough fighter, very competitive, but he just didn't like punches. I knew this, see. Now, when you fought Ken Norton, though, not only did he not want to take your shot, but you looked him right in the eye. You could tell he wanted no part of you. He was afraid before that fight. Uh, I knew this year. Um, when we were at the weigh-in, six weeks prior to this, I knew that he didn't want to part of me. So I knew I just couldn't go to him. See, you back Ken up, you drag your leg, you can't fight backing up. You back him up, you got him. Being a puncher, he couldn't come in, come to me and take those shots and survive. That was a first round knockout of Ken Norton. Where does that rank in terms of success, moments in the ring? Where would you rank that moment? Well, uh, quite high, because uh, Kenny was a good fighter. It was, it was like a, um, the, the one who would get shot Larry home for the title, so it had to be quite high in my career, in my career. You know, I mean, we talked about the corner and how important the corner is. There's something else. You fought everybody who was put in front of you, yeah. but maybe one of your biggest opponents was Blackie Gennaro, who was your manager. Yeah. He was very tight with the money. He wouldn't give you the expenses you <laughs> needed. This guy became really your biggest opponent, and he was supposed to be on your side. <laughs> well, we had our differences. Uh, Blackie was a good guy. He just uh, did not fight giving away the time. But he, he, he wasn't a bad guy. Blackie did a lot for me. He, he had me on sour and stuff. We, we had like the we had a few disagreements, but he, was, he wasn't a bad guy. He just wasn't knowledgeable about the fight game like he shouldn't have so at the time. How, how'd you end up with him? Well, um, I'm from a Youngstown area, and my Pedro told me I had my amateur trainer, so Ernie, we want to go to a guy that's local we can trust. I had an offer from all over the country. So we interviewed quite a few of the guys, and we decided to go with Gennaro because he was local. And he like said he had a good heart. He just didn't, at the time, know if I gave him the will, but he, he's a good guy, though. He might not have been a bad guy, but if you wanted a $3 steak, he made sure you had a $2 steak. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, like I said, we had a, a few problems, but he's okay. All right, we'll come back. We'll talk more with Ernie Shavers on the other side. If you have a fax, send it to us. It's toll free. I'm going to have... Welcome back. We are talking boxing. Ernie Shavers getting ready for a comeback fight coming up in June. Ernie, we talked about George Foreman. How about some of the other fighters that are still around? Mike Tyson's out of prison. We're not exactly sure what to expect from him. What about Mike Tyson? In his prime, it's always tough to say, but if he came back and he fought in that whole area, that whole period of the 70s, Joe Frazier, Ernie Shavers, Muhammad Ali, how would Mike Tyson have done? Mike would have been, would have been just one of the boys. The, the caliber fight had been compared to 70. We had the toughest era in the history of the heavyweight division in the 70s. Mike would have been one of the boys then. So you think, well, Mike Tyson was absolutely going through guys, 91 seconds, Michael Spinks. He whacked out everybody put in front of him. You don't think he would have been exceptional in the 70s? No, no, no. We, too many tough guys there. Too many tough guys. You fought Muhammad Ali in his prime. How would Muhammad have done against Mike? He would have beat him. Too fast. He would have beat him. Yeah. Uh, and in his prime, how can I see him might beat Ali? Mike Tyson, no one else. And when you said Roy Williams was the toughest guy you ever fought, but was there a better fighter than Muhammad Ali in his prime? Oh, no, Ali would have beat him, but Roy just tough. Ali was a very crafty, crafty fighter. You know, he knew the fight game very well. Roy just a tough, hard-nosed guy. I mean, good combination of puncher, and he come to fight. And uh, it was, every night would have been a long night with Roy. Muhammad, though, was so gifted physically. Yeah. What about the games? Like you said, during your fight with him, he kind of tricked you a little bit. What would he say to you during a fight? How would he get into your mind? <laughs> well, he tried to get my mind. Uh, Ernie, throw some punches, the crowd watching you. I say, what? You do, you throw some. But I, I knew him very well. We were friends before, three or four years before. We became very good friends. But he trying to, trying to psych me, but it didn't work, you know. He's trying to talk to you and make you get off your battle plan and, you know, get you off, like I say, get you frustrated and stuff. George Foreman has a belt right now. Bruce Seldon has a belt right now. Oliver McCall has a belt. Riddick Bowe has a belt. Mike Tyson's coming back. Who's the best fighter in the heavyweight division today? Well, you know, there's so many good guys around. Mike won the top guy, you know, and there's Tim, Trotter, Tim pulled him on fine, but he won the guy, good, good left hand like Ali. I mean, the guy got uh, good moves, good left hand. See, Tim comes and beat him all because he, he's a good boxer, being shaped 
And to beat Mac, you got to be a puncher or a boxer. And you'll be a puncher, you got to punch him, maybe the boxer, I'll move him, that's all. What about Riddick Bowe? Riddick Bowe, I don't watch the fight game that closely. The league, I think a boxer beat him, too. What about... Riddick Bowe is really something. I mean, people, he has a certain charisma. He hasn't been quite the same since he got beat by Evander Holyfield. Yeah. Tell me about a loss. How does a fighter change after that first loss? Well, it all depends on how you uh, take it, except, you know, some guys, they, they lose hard and they never come back. Uh, but during our era, you lost, you came back, you worked hard, you, come, you came back, you know. Uh, but I just don't know. You know, hard to say. Each guy uh, will affect each guy differently. Yeah. Ernie, you struck me as a guy who really respects a fighter with heart, a yeah. fighter who's tough, a fighter who's got that kind of fortitude inside. You think about somebody like that and you can't help but think about Evander Holyfield. He's a warrior. Tough, tough man. Tough man. Uh, I love Evander. He's a really good guy. I know him personally. I think he's going to do quite well for himself. Uh, he was shot to come back. Always going to be in for a tough night with him. You, know, you talk about how you want to come back and take care of your family. You want to make some money. Evander Holyfield, Ernie, has $104 million that he's made. If you had that kind of money, would you be in the ring? Well, the cost of living went up a little bit, so it may... <laughs> <laughs> That's an awful well, lot of money, though. Well, it, it's, if it's in your heart, you want to fight. You know, it, see, it's not the money. You're very competitive. You want to win. You know, got to get out of your system. It's not the money always. You know, that a lot of guys are not, not there for the money. They're very competitive. They want to copy a certain thing. That's all. Now, I'm throwing a lot of questions out. When we come back, some of our viewers have questions for you. We'll have that for you on the other side. Bernie Shaver is joining us on a Thursday night. He is 50 years old, and he is getting back into the ring. Coming up on Friday, more for you. Eugene Robinson, Seattle Seahawks, joins us. So much 76 victories and 70 knockouts, but rather nine daughters and no sons. <laughs> Bernie, that's incredible. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I only one son, but we have nine daughters. I'm, I love them all very dearly. No son, but a grandson, though. So, What did the daughters think about the comeback? Oh, at yeah, first they thought, Daddy, I, you make it hurt. I said, look, I was training hard. I'd be in good condition. I can take care of myself. Plus, you're getting a cut of the money. You'll kill him. <laughs> <laughs> now, the money keeps coming up, Bernie. The money comes up a lot in this interview. Your wife has you on allowance, doesn't she? 20 bucks a week. Not to waste it. I, I'm afraid to tip anybody. They, they call me stingy. <laughs> 20 bucks a week. All right, let's get some questions in for you. Remember, if you're surfing around the net, it's a good way to get a hold of our guests, ask some questions directly. Right now, we have the sports zone for you. First question comes to us from California. Paul, how would you size up the integrity of today's game, and how does it compare to your era? Well, you know, during the 70s, I, I think, it was an era, of, you know, on its own for the heavyweights. Uh, guys today, they're, they're good fighters, but you can't compare it to the 70s. You know, there were so many tough guys in, so um, they're good, though. Good, good integrity, I think. All right, that one's from California. Get another question right now. From Atlanta, Calvin, who is the greatest fighter you ever faced? Who do you think is the greatest fighter of all time? Uh, Ali and Ali. Both of them. He's a great fighter of the part. I think uh, for the heavyweight, Ali. His, his size, he moves like a lightweight. And Ali, I think, will, he would have beat Joe Lewis and any other guy, I think. Honey, you really want George, don't you? I love to have George. Love to have George. Give me that two hour notice. <laughs> but when the guy since 1969, love to have him. Hope we can put the fight together. George been ducking me. So, George, come on out. We know you're there. If you don't fight me, I'll fight one of his sons. So, I'm going to wait around. So, best to get over, get over with. Another question from the Sports Zone. This one's from Houston. Nick. Are the current batch of heavyweights as bad as they appear to be? How would they measure up to the fighters of your era? Well, you know, the heavyweights, they, 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 you, any fighter can get in the ring is a good fighter. I mean, you can't it take a lot of nerve to get in the ring. But as I can say, during the 70s, we had a good era, a good era, a lot of good fighters today, too, so I can't say they're all bad fighters. But during the 70s, they said it was the best era for the heavyweight. So, you know. 50 years old, nine daughters, and a $20 a week allowance, and he's back in the ring. Got to fight. Ernie, George good, is in trouble. Good luck. George is in trouble. Good luck with everything. Take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you real soon. Thank you, Jim. Thank All you. All right, Ernie, good seeing you. Ernie Shaver's back in the ring in June. Definitely look forward to that.